Good afternoon. Welcome to Wednesday of Holy Week. If you're anything like me, it probably feels a little bit surreal in the sense that we're not quite sure which day of the week it is. Perhaps even you're struggling to find out what time of the day it is. Each day I've tried to build in for myself some structure. That structure includes just stopping and praying at midday. So let's have a moment of quiet as we come together before God. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you've redeemed the world. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. We glory in your cross, O Lord, and praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For by virtue of the cross, joy has come into the world. Amen. I don't know about you, but it can feel very anxious at this time. I was feeling quite positive until through our letterbox dropped a parcel. And in that parcel were some hair clippers. And Claire has decided that she is going to become a barber. At that moment, the surrealness and the anxiety of this present moment came into focus all at once. And then I was reminded of a story from the Old Testament, a story of Elijah and Elisha. Elijah has passed on his mantle and his responsibilities to lead the prophets of Israel to Elisha. Elisha has been informing the forces of the people of Israel what the Arameans are going to do to them. And the king of Aram has sent an army to capture Elisha. Elisha's servant wakes up early in the morning and looks out from the city where they have spent the night. And he says this in 2 Kings. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. And the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. As I was thinking about what I might say this morning, I thought of these words, Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. It's very easy to overindulge on the news, to spend far too much time looking on the internet for advice about the present coronavirus. It's all too easy to become overloaded by our screens, our emails, social media, the radio and the television, and get ourselves into a real state and begin to worry that somehow God has lost control of his world. I don't think for one moment that God is some sort of magic slot machine where we can pull a handle and get all the answers we want. There is suffering in our world. There is pain. And perhaps the events of Holy Week, more than any other, remind us that God stands in our pain and our anxiety and our fear and walks with us. But perhaps, too, we need to remind ourselves in this present crisis that we are an Easter people. It might be strange to say that during Holy Week, but we cannot pretend that we do not know the end of the story. Although we walk with Jesus this week, one step at a time, through his passion, through to Good Friday and the pain of the cross, we live in the shadow of that cross, but we live in the sunlight provided by the resurrection. And we know more than anything else that God is ultimately in control of our lives and of our world. We may not always understand what it is that he is saying to us. It is perhaps only when we look back after this crisis that we will see what God has been saying to his church and to us as individuals. 
all of us, I suspect, already know of people that have already got the virus. We may even be aware of people who've died because of it. And God can feel very far away. It is at those times, perhaps, when we need each other more than anything else. We need to be able to pick up the phone, talk to our friends, our family, tell them how much they mean to us, and to hear their voices. But we need to remember, too, that God is with us in every step of this crisis. He knows our fears, our pains and anxieties. And I think his word to us today is those who are with us are more than those who are with them. God cares and loves us as his people. And he sent Jesus as his son to be the embodiment of that love. And so however you're feeling today, take a moment to step back, to ask God to give you that sense of his presence and purpose for your life. Ask him to lift the burden of the anxieties that you might be feeling. And if I'm honest, all of us do feel them. There's no point pretending that somehow we're, we've had this magic injection, this jab in the arm to protect us from bad things. That's not how faith works. But what we do know is that God is in the darkness as well as the light. He's in the pain as well as the joy. And he brings hope to all of us if we will let him. So let's have a moment of quiet as we draw our thoughts together and pray. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to you and all ages. To you be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen.